Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, Tom Bauer is out here claiming that Meghan's got a secret weapon up her designer sleeve, and it's aimed right at the heart of the royal family. What is this weapon, you ask? Well, hold on to your tiras, folks, because it's apparently a tell-all memoir. Now, I don't know about you, but the thought of Meghan Markle writing a memoir is about as surprising as finding out that water is wet. I mean, come on, we all know she loves to share her truth with the world, whether we want to hear it or not. But here's where it gets spicy. Bauer's saying that this book is going to be filled with venom and lies. Ouch, he's not pulling any punches, is he? But let's be real for a second. Are we really surprised? This is Meghan we're talking about. The woman who turned a blind date into a royal wedding and then managed to convince Harry to ditch his entire family and move to California. If that's not a masterclass in manipulation, I don't know what is. Now, I can already hear some of you typing furiously in the comments, but everyone has a right to tell their story. And to that, I say, honey, there's telling your story, and then there's burning every bridge you've ever crossed. And from the sounds of it, Megan's about to go full pyromaniac on the royal family. But wait, there's more. Bauer's saying that this book is specifically aimed at hurting King Charles and Catherine. Now let's think about this for a second. What could Meghan possibly have on Charles and Catherine that we don't already know? Is she going to reveal that Charles secretly loves wearing Crocs? That Catherine once ate a burger with a knife and fork? The suspense is killing me. Of course, Meghan's supporters are already out in full force, crying foul and claiming this is all just a smear campaign. But here's the thing, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a gold-digging, fame-hungry duck. Just saying. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Megan is the devil incarnate or anything. But let's call a spade a spade. This woman has been playing the game since day one. She saw an opportunity with Harry, and she took it. And honestly, part of me kind of respects the hustle. I mean, going from deal or no deal girl to duchess. That's some serious social climbing skills right there. But here's where Megan messed up. She thought she could have her cake and eat it too. She wanted the tiara, the titles, the fame, but she didn't want any of the responsibility or scrutiny that came with it. Sorry, honey, but that's not how it works in the real world, let alone in the royal family. And let's talk about Harry for a second, shall we? Poor guy looks like he's been through the ringer. Remember when he used to be the fun royal, the one who was always up for a laugh, who seemed genuinely down to earth. Now he looks like he's constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's like watching a man slowly realize he's made a terrible mistake, but he's in too deep to back out now. But back to this memoir. The fact that Megan's allegedly writing it is interesting, isn't it? I mean, hasn't she already told her truth in the Oprah interview, in the Netflix documentary, in Harry's book? How many times can you play the victim card before people start calling your bluff? And you know what? Maybe it's time someone did call her bluff. It's about time someone held up a mirror to Megan's behavior. Because let's face it, if she was just a regular celebrity, this kind of thing would be called out all the time. But because she's got that royal connection, people have been tiptoeing around it. Now, I'm not saying Megan deserves to be crucified for every little thing she does. We all have skeletons in our closets, and God knows I've got a few questionable fashion choices in mind that I'd rather forget. But there's a big difference between having a past and actively trying to rewrite it. And that's what Megan's been doing since day one. She's been trying to portray herself as this perfect, woke princess who's been victimized by the mean old royal family. But honey, if this memoir is going to be what Bauer says it is, you're about to show your true colors, and they ain't pretty. The saddest part of all this is that Meghan actually had a real opportunity to do some good. She had a platform, she had influence, she could have really made a difference. But instead, she chose to focus on herself, on her image, on her brand. It's like watching someone with a megaphone shout about how they want privacy. It's contradictory, it's confusing, and frankly, it's getting old. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, for one, it's a masterclass in how not to handle fame and fortune. 
It's also a stark reminder that the truth always comes out in the end. You can try to control the narrative all you want, but sooner or later, someone's going to spill the tea. But more than that, it's a wake-up call. To Megan, to Harry, and to anyone else who thinks that fame is a one-way street, it's not just about what you can get from the public, it's also about what you give back. It's about understanding that your actions have consequences, that people are watching, and that you have the power to influence others. Meghan could have learned a lot from other royals like Catherine. Say what you want about Kate, but that woman knows how to play the game. She shows up, she does her job, and she does it with grace and dignity. She doesn't need to be the loudest voice in the room because she understands that true influence comes from actions, not words. Megan, on the other hand, seems to view her fame as a personal playground. It's all about what she can get out of it, how she can use it to further her own agenda. And look, I get it. We all want to be successful. We all want to make our mark on the world. But there's a way to do it that doesn't involve steamrolling over everyone else. Now let's talk about the broader implications of all this. Because it's not just about Megan and her alleged memoir. It's about how we, as a society, view public figures and what we expect from them. On one hand, we'd have the Megan approach, loud, in your face, constantly demanding attention. It's the reality TV star approach to fame. It's about making sure you're always in the headlines, always trending, always being talked about. On the other hand, we have the more traditional approach, dignified, purposeful, focused on the job at hand. It's the old school approach to public life. It's about understanding that your position comes with responsibilities and that sometimes the best way to serve is to step back and let others shine. Which approach is better? Well, that depends on what you're trying to achieve. If your goal is to be famous for the sake of being famous, then sure, go the Megan route. But if you're trying to make a real difference, to use your platform for good, then maybe take a page out of Catherine's book. But here's the thing. It's not just about Megan. It's about all of us. In this age of social media, where everyone's got a platform, where everyone's vying for attention, we all need to ask ourselves, what kind of public figure do we want to be? Are we the type who needs to be the center of attention at all times? Or are we the type who understands that sometimes, the most powerful thing we can do is to step back and let others shine? Are we the type who uses our platform to elevate ourselves or to elevate others? Are we here to serve or to be served? These are questions that go beyond royal drama. They're questions about character, about purpose, about what it means to be a public figure in the 21 saint century. And look, I get it. It's not easy being in the public eye. The pressure, the scrutiny, the constant judgment, it's enough to make anyone crack. But that's where true character shines through. It's in how you handle that pressure, how you rise to the occasion, how you use your platform for good. Meghan and Harry had a unique opportunity when they left the royal family. They could have charted a new course, shown a different way of being public figures. They could have used their platform to highlight important causes, to bring attention to issues that matter. Instead, it feels like they've just traded one form of celebrity for another. They've gone from being royals to being, what, exactly, professional complainers? Professional victims? It's hard to say. And that's the real tragedy here, because Meghan and Harry could be doing so much good. They have the platform, they have the attention, they have the resources. But instead of using all of that to make a real difference, they seem more concerned with settling scores and airing grievances. So, what's the lesson here? Well, it's simple, really. If you find yourself in a position of influence, use it wisely. Use it to lift others up, not to draw attention to yourself. Use it to make a difference, not to make headlines. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Not how many likes you get on Instagram, not how many headlines you generate, but what you've actually done to make the world a little bit better. Megan could learn a lot from this. She could learn that true influence doesn't come from constantly being in the spotlight, but from using your platform responsibly and purposefully. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a neighborhood critic with a YouTube channel. But I'll tell you this, I'd rather read the phone book than sit through another Meghan Markle pity party disguised as a memoir. So, what do you think? Is this memoir going to be the final nail in Meghan's coffin, 
Or is it just another chapter in her never-ending saga? Is Megan a master manipulator, or just a misunderstood girl trying to live her best life? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get this debate going. And remember, if you enjoyed this hot take on the royal drama, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You never know when the next royal scandal will drop, and trust me, you'll want to hear my take on it. So stay tuned, my friends, because if there's one thing I've learned from watching the royals, it's that the drama never stops, and neither do I. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.